So today in this video, things are gonna get just a little twisted, so stay tuned. Okay, we're back, and this is Simeon for Audio Plugin Deals, and we are taking a look at the Clark Audio Twisted Key Suite. This is a collection of three different pianos, and let's just take a look at what's included before we uh, dive in and listen to some more. So let's take a look. So you can see that the Twisted Key Suite is made up of three different pianos, um, a Mark I uh, and a Mark II, and a U3 upright. And, um, you know, they didn't really want to go for just a really clean, uh, pure type of uh, piano sounds. They're going for more of a lo-fi vintage sound with these, uh, with these keyboards, with these pianos. And I think they've done a really good job in kind of capturing a really cool uh, vibe with these. Okay, so here I have the Mark I loaded in the full version of Contact. So you need the full version of Contact to run the Twisted Key Suite. And the screen is just pretty laid out. The GUI just gives you some very basic uh, controls over the envelope, uh, the output. You've got like an overdrive type of effect, and then the gain. And um, it's just got a really, really characteristic sound. All of that characteristic sound of that uh, Rhodes, the the unmistakable tone and texture of that Rhodes. But uh, if we go under the hood in the effects, it opens up some really cool possibilities. Uh, one of the cool things is this flutter control uh, that gives you a little uh, interesting wow and flutter and uh, that adjusts the depth and then you've got control over the speed. This is where things get a little twisted. <laughs> and you can just kind of adjust that and make it more subtle. Uh, we also have like a reverb that we can put a little room on there. And some delay. Effects, uh, the dynamics of uh, the effects. And then we have like uh, some filtering. We can just kind of just shape the sound a little bit more. You've got a low and a high pass filter. We've got a different, uh, few different noise profiles. We've got some vinyl noises here. Just some uh, interesting effects here. You've got rain. Let's just pull that up some. Yeah, yeah, you can just add a little bit of interesting ambiences to these. Yeah, so you can get really gritty and lo-fi with these. That's kind of neat. Just a little bit of those type of effects just add a little bit of character and personality. And uh, we're just kind of messing around with all of these uh, effects. And then always you can save these 
Uh, I always like to recommend using the snapshots for these so you can create your own sounds and save them as a snapshot. So click on that camera icon and uh, you can um, just click on the little disc icon and then you can save uh, save your preset. So I'm just gonna call this um, uh, EM, yeah, EM1 Simeon. Yeah, spell your name right. There you go. And then we can save that. And uh, there you go. So now when you drop that down, you're gonna see the presets uh, pop up there that you can create. And so experiment and save those and you can come back to them later. Uh, but last but not least on the effects, uh, they've given you kind of a, a interesting arpeggiator that we can go. And the uh, steps are uh, intensity. So you hold, hold the note down and then how high the, uh, the uh, steps are, that's the velocity. So we can just kind of sweep all of these down a little bit and uh, just hold something down. And we have different uh, steps like uh, quarter notes. Uh. So I'm at 120 beats per minute, so that's how it's subdividing that. So you can go 1 16th. And you can do triplets. Let's do um, eighth note triplets. Yeah, that sounds kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. So little things like that just kind of trigger some fun, uh, fun ideas, and then we can go back to the main. Okay, so that's the um, that's the Mark One, and let's uh, let's just kind of change gears here, because you do have to use the full version of Contact. Let's go to the browser. I have all of most of my contact library stored uh, on my D drive in a folder called contact library. So I created a Clark Audio twisted folder. So I double click on that and uh, I already have the EM1 loaded. So um, let's go to the um, let's go to the upright. So I see the uh, twisted upright folder there and I go on down and then I can click and drag over and load load it that way. So I'm going to show you that. Yeah, see, so we can load it that way. Or I'm going to close this, or we can use the quick load. So what I've done, I created um, a, a Clark Audio folder, and I can just drag and drop um, these folders and files uh, into, these, into the quick load, and I can actually go in and do the same thing and drag up and drop, and there we go. So I'm going to go ahead and close the browser there. Um, Close the quick load. And let's take a listen to this uh, Yamaha U3 um, upright. So here we go. And um, with the releases, I like using the release a little bit to let the piano speak. Uh, not so much, uh, not too much, unless you're going for a specific effect. And I'm in D, D flat for some reason today, but. Listen to the character in that piano. Just a really vintage lo-fi sound, and that's what they're going for. And let's, um, you've got control over the hammer noise here. Okay, yeah. That's the releases. The hammer's resetting on there. So uh, again, I always look at those things like as little spices. A little bit, uh, but not too much. Yeah, so that's, a, that's fun. So let's go to the uh, effects section and uh, see if we can just uh, kind of um, just mess with this some more. I'm gonna put some vinyl one and rain. Yeah, rain, we had a nice rain last night. Yeah, let's see. <laughs> let's 
a little reverb on there to just a little bit, just a little bit to make it uh, interesting and a little flutter to it as well. Yeah, that's about as vintage as you can get right there. That's, uh, that's amazing. That's a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah, you can adjust that reverb and get, get things right where you want it. And you can, um, let's do this. Let's just bring the size up a little bit and um, put a little bit of the uh, delay on there. And let's see what we can do. I'm going to turn the rain up a little bit more. And let's put rain one on too. Yeah. Now let's... Let's see here what we can do with this. And let's um, play with the filter a little bit. Yeah, that kind of makes it almost like a felted uh, type of sound. Let's bring up the reverb some more. Just take it all the way up. Yeah, so they've been able to give you these controls that you can just shape the sounds of these keyboards. Um, yeah, it's just really interesting when you start digging in and, and uh, making those changes. And uh, remember to save. So let's just do that. I'm going to just call this um, Upright uh, U3. Let's just do this. U3 uh, Cinematic. <laughs> yeah, Cinematic. Cinematic, yes, there we go. Boom, there we go. So make sure when you're experimenting, always save, um, save because uh, you never know to when you're gonna be able to get to that exact thing again. Okay, so let's um, let's take a look at uh, the other electric piano, the EM2. Now this is uh, based on uh, a Rose Mark II. So let me tell you what I did. I did a little bit of research and it, was, it seems like that the difference between the Mark I and the Mark II, uh, there's a there's several differences. Uh, the Mark I, when they first introduced the Rhodes, used um, felt tip hammers. Uh, the tips were felt, but what the problem was when you use felt over and over again, it started to um, degrade the uh, the tips, just like a, in, a, in an acoustic piano, the hammers are felt and, and over time, 
you will see tiny grooves uh, start to form in those hammers. And so that's the, what happened with the roads. Hitting that felt, hitting those tines over and over again would, uh, would cause grooves in the hammers. So what they did, they uh, went from the felt to like a neoprene hammer, uh, the tips. And so as the Mark I progressed, uh, they just uh, changed the hammer design. And then with the Mark II, they not only changed the hammer design again, uh, using some different shapes and, uh, and materials, the tine material also changed as well. And the Mark I tines uh, just tended to be more brittle, but the Mark II, uh, you know, they used some different materials and the metals and the alloys for the tines, and it kind of gave it a different sound. And we're gonna take a listen to this, uh, the Mark II, and they also changed like some of the cabinet design. It was interesting because uh, the roads just continued to develop different things uh, over the different models. Even in the same year, they would always tweak it. So uh, really no two roads uh, would be necessarily alike uh, back in those early days of uh, the development. So let's take a, a deeper look at the uh, Mark II. Yeah, my hands have fallen on D flat, but let's go to F. And you can kind of hear a little subtle difference in the tone of the uh, Mark II. It almost has a little bit of extra bark, uh, whereas the Mark I kind of was more bell-like. This one has a little more bark. Too. Yeah, you can hear that little extra bark. Yeah, so that has a little bit of a uh, bit, bit of it has a little bit more bark to it. So um, let's just uh, throw in some of these effects and uh, see. Take a listen. Yeah, just a little little nice uh, room. And I'm looking at the CPU meter and man, it is very low. It's very low, a very nice 2%. So very, very nice performance here. So um, yeah, let's just, yeah, and we can use this high pass filter and kind of shape that sound a little bit more. And uh, the, de the delay uh, as well. You've got a damping on there too. <laughs> so you can have some fun with that. And this uh, this tape thing, the flutter thing, is just uh, kind of an interesting um, an interesting feature. Uh, so you can just take that depth all the way over and just kind of give just a little taste of the flutter. It just kind of it kind of twists it a little bit. I remember that uh, Radio Shack. Remember Radio Shack? The tape decks would always play at a different speed. The motors would run at a different. Uh, 
So when you put it in a regular cassette player, it would be, uh, it would be all warped and crazy. Well, yeah, you can just get some crazy things with this. Well, thanks for joining me, and I hope uh, you enjoyed taking a look at the Twisted Key Suite from Clark Audio. And if it's your first time here, make sure you subscribe and click on all those notifications and uh, check out all the links in the description in, in below as well. And uh, thanks for uh, spending some time with me today. I look forward to seeing you next time.